be with each of you, dear friends and church family and beyond. We welcome you to this time of thanking God for life and blessings, as well as seeking peace and grace for the living of our days. Those of you who are online, you may want to grab some common food and drink that can be used for sharing in communion later on in worship with us. And a reminder that everybody is welcome to share at communion. This is what we call an open table because God is the invitee. God invites you to this table. This is not owned by the church. It is God's table and you are welcome here. If you have prayer concerns, if you are online, you can note them via Facebook live chat. For those of you who are in person, you may take a slip of paper from the back of your chair racks and pass it to our videographer who will share later on. A few announcements for church life. Um, this morning, we welcome from the organization Western Service Workers, uh, Olivia Rodriguez, Administrative Assistant, and possibly Director Emily Cunningson might be on her way. Um, under the direction of Emily, this organization has been working in our area for many years. It works to, do, um, to advocate for people who are low-income workers and families on behalf of those who are struggling to survive, as well as being activists and advocates for fire survivors over the past years in Shasta County, as well as other counties. We have been in partnership with them for several years, uh, as they have uh, shared in different activities in our building, and we look forward to maintaining sustainable communities, recognizing that this is a call to all people of faith as we seek to understand God's call on our lives. We are having a potluck lunch immediately following this service at 11 a.m. There will not be a second service. Plan to join us. Uh, if you're watching online, it's not too late to get dressed and come on down at 11 o'clock uh, for some great food and fellowship. Even if you didn't plan on coming, just come because there's lots of food. Come Use in your pajamas. Come in your pajamas, Marty says. <laughs> just be comfortable. Yes. <laughs> Newsletters are on the back table. If you get yours by mail, uh, if you get it via email, they were emailed out to you. Hard copies will be mailed out Tuesday for those who get them via hard copy. Hope Band collections are due on Wednesday. Please check the sign-up sheet for what is still needed to help feed the unsheltered, which will be given out Friday morning. This Saturday is an outreach meeting at 10 o'clock, and the Seek Festival starts at 10.30 in Anderson at the Seek Center. If you have never been to the Basaki Festival, I encourage you to make this the year to go. Uh, it is worth going to, not just for the amazing free food, but for the talented artists and acts, as well as gorgeous outfits, which are given out to men and women, first come, first serve. Many of the fabrics that we have used on our table have come directly from the Sikh Festival, and. I have told Amajit more than once that uh, we celebrate our bond with them uh, by using their fabrics in our worship service, so we have that connection with them. Are there other announcements? Does thrift store want to? Thrift store needs a Oh, that thing. I finished sure that this cough is due to allergies, but it's very annoying. I'm sorry. Um, we definitely need a cashier on Thursday, and we have the whole cashier slot wide open, and we need a floor person the second half of the shift on Thursday, that's May 4th. On May 6th, Saturday, we need a cashier. We have no cashier that day, so we need one or two people to fill that time, and I may be contacting you to get someone to fill in on Tuesday. I'm not sure about that yet. That's sort of up in the air. So if you are able to volunteer at the thrift store, if you've never volunteered before, that's okay. We've got plenty of ways to get you up to speed. The people who you would be working with, you're never there by yourself. The people you'd be working with are more than happy to help you. Thank you so much, Marty. And we hope that cop gets better for you. Are there others? Yes, Ellis. 
uh, Bible study will be held on Thursday at 12 o'clock. We're starting the book of Daniel. <laughs> the book of Daniel. Okay. That's a courageous choice. <laughs> okay. Yes, Jill. Shasta College Band Concert, Friday and Saturday, 730 same concert both nights. So okay, Shasta College Band, of which Joe is a member, a uh, concert on Friday and Saturday night at 7.30. And I bet you can check out how to get tickets on... Five dollars. Five dollars. At the door. At the, you, at the door. At the door. I think you can get them online too, but... Okay, okay. So come and hear a great, great concert Friday or Saturday night at Shasta College, 7.30? 7.30. 7.30. Great. Thank you, Joe. Yes, Leslie. Uh, next Sunday, um, the 7th, I believe that is, uh, I will be here, and we are just in Rosemary Courses in Houston, and her daughter had perfect surgery, by the way, her hip surgery, and uh, we've seen dancing with her husband four days back. Yay. Um, I don't know what kind of surgery. That's I'm good here. news. <laughs> that was um, important. Uh, but, so we need a greeter next need a greeter next Sunday if you're able to talk to Leslie if you're able to fill in uh, and help out uh, next Sunday morning uh, in Leslie and Rosemary's absence uh, and Diane at holiday oops, sorry. Diane who could not be may not be here today. okay right so definitely need a greeter for next Sunday okay thank you are there other announcements for our church family yeah. yes um, so I wanted to let the congregation know that I'm uh, transitioning into a new theme uh, on the baptism. We'll to see some things about gardening. So that, again, I like to pick things up like the reading. And that's for you to take. It isn't just a scroll. So feel free to take what's there. Thank you. Thank you. So books on the baptistry back there that, on gardening. All right. If there are no others, I invite you to take a deep breath and allow God to greet you in this time and place as Sonia ushers us into the presence of God with the prayer.
I'm going to invite you to remain seated for the call to worship this morning. Sometimes worship is a parade, a celebration, a gathering of God's creatures expressing their joy. Sometimes worship is an adventure, a quest, a gathering of God's creatures searching for meaning. Sometimes worship is a funeral, a fast, a gathering of those seeking comfort in their grief. Among us today who have come to march and who have come to worship, some have come to march, some have come to search, some have come to weep, some have come to learn. Whatever brings you here this day, we acknowledge to God that God invites us to be touched by each other with love and support. So come with open minds, open hearts, and open arms that we all might find that for which we have come this day. As patterns of life are woven into rich textures of meaning through our life experiences, so we enhance and strengthen our lives in worship. So come then, children of God, to discover new possibilities for compassion, for putting our love into action, for drawing closer to our God as we soar on the wings of faith and grace. Now I invite you to stand if you're able to sing together our opening hymn, Restless Weaver, which will run uh, behind me on as well as will be in your uh, hymnal. Let us stand together. Eternal God, as you kindled the faith of the apostles, 
you are ready to set our souls free. Equip us to be transformed as we learn to surrender all that we have to you. Create within us glad and generous hearts so we may support the work of building sustainable communities in our midst. Hear our praises and petitions as we seek to reflect true Christian community while promoting the goodwill of all people. In Christ's name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. And now I welcome uh, Miss Olivia, I think it is today, to come forward. Good morning. Aren't you beautiful today? Is that a new dress? Can you show me? Can you twirl around? Oh. <laughs> Isn't it amazing when dresses twirl and you make them? Oh, you look beautiful. Would you like to have a seat? Thank you. For Sparky even thought it was beautiful. He was cheering for you. Thank you for coming today, and I'm so glad you're here. Olivia, can you tell me? Do you ever pray? Do you know what prayer is? When, do you ever say thank you, God, sometimes? Except on, sometimes we do that on Sunday mornings, don't we? We say thank you, God, for things. What about do the, during the week? Do you ever say a prayer? Yeah. You do? <gasps> do you know that some people forget to do that during the week and they only do it on Sundays? <laughs> we could learn something from you, Olivia, because you pray during the week, don't you? Yeah. And do you talk to God sometimes? Yeah. yeah. Is that an okay thing to do, you think? I think it is, too. I think God likes it when we talk to God. I think sometimes God might even get a little lonely if we don't talk to God. Yeah. So I'm so glad that you make God happy when you talk to God. I'm so glad that your mom and your grandma and your dad have taught you that it's okay to talk to God other than on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Do you ever remember what do you talk to God about? What do you talk to God about? Do you ever talk about your day, something you did that you liked? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. What did you like about this week? What, what happened good this week? got a new dress? Yeah, yeah. And when you did that, was a good thing. Yeah, I think it is. Yes. <sighs> Anything else good happened this week? Um, is there anything that, that preschool that was good? And you got tights? Oh, those are beautiful. And they match your dress. Oh, that's even a good thing, too. Look at that, how that works. I think that is something to thank God for. Can we thank God for that? And let me see your fingernails. Oh my word, those even match. Now, what color is that again? Dark purple. Oh my gosh, it's not even light purple or medium purple. It's dark purple. And those are what color? Those are light purple. Okay. You are getting, you probably never heard of the Met Gala, but you could go there in New York City someday dressed like you are, if they would let you right in, because you are a fashion icon. That means you're really good at fashion. Yes. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for coming and showing us. So can we thank God for, um, what can we thank God for? For dresses. For dresses. 
got for new dresses, okay? What else? And it's like Elsa? Is it like Elsa? Yes. Yes. And can we thank God for purple? Yeah. Yeah. I like that color too. Yes. What else can we thank God for? Because I think God likes for us to talk. Can we, what could we else we thank God for? For flowers, that's a great thing. I am so grateful for flowers, and they've been beautiful, haven't they? Yeah. Very pretty. Okay, can you show me how we get ready to talk to God in this place? Thank you for reminding me. Everybody repeat after me, okay? Thank you, God. Thank, Thank you, God. For new dresses. For new, new dresses. dresses. For the color purple. For the color purple. And for flowers. And for flowers. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want everybody can sing Jesus loves me and you can choose a drink. Yes, she's an early morning, right? All night long. Wow. 
found out she cannot have the surgery for her brain issue. Well, she cannot have that no, surgery. But she will be on medication. Okay. She was so thrilled. She must have slept all night. I said, Oh, she yes. Said, Pray for me that this continues. Yeah. So and prayers for Barbara that she can sleep, continue to sleep all night, night yeah. not wake up at two in the morning. Yes. Um, uh, some of you know that there's a condition that's affecting her brain and causing it to shrink. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they're hoping with medication that they can treat that. Are there others that we can do in prayer for? Yes, Gail. Yeah. Sonia and I have a mutual friend um, here in town who has a husband who is um, actually lives in a different country far away, and uh, he is recovering from um, serious surgery. And so um, my concern is for her. She's um, she can't go over there. She can't be there, and she doesn't know how to support him. And you know, it's just um, very anxious. Are you comfortable sharing the first name, or would you rather not? I'd rather not. Okay, that's fine. It's God knows who it is. So prayers for uh, this woman who is in uh, uh, deep turmoil uh, and uh, missing her husband uh, in another country. Okay. Um, I want to uh, take this opportunity to offer prayers for Western service workers and the many, many volunteers who are out there on the front lines battling injustice and poverty and uh, doing one of those things that the church has always been called to do and hopefully we're trying to do, uh, Western Service Workers is doing and uh, we are grateful for their work. Um, if there are no other prayers, I invite you to take a deep breath and let God speak to you in these moments as we share our thoughts and prayers in the spirit of Emily, talking to God as God loves to be talked to. Let us pray. I mean, Spirit of Olivia. Spirit, not, uh, Emily, too. Spirit of Olivia. I'm thinking Olivia, she just inspired me. So let Olivia's readiness to talk to God invite you to be the same. Oh, God of an awe and wonder, we seek to come to you like a little child, finding so much in this world to praise you for. The simple things that you give in our lives that make us smile. We praise you for the many wonders and signs that you bring in our midst and beyond. You are our parent and we are your children. And we ask that you will speak to us in ways that we can understand. Speak to us through the teachings of your prophets and followers. Touch us in the breaking of the bread together with glad and generous hearts. Walk with us in times of struggle, trials, and despair. Invite us to see how you welcome all creatures into the safety of your fold. Your presence is a continuing comfort to us all. We thank you, God, for meeting us in our most vulnerable moments and giving us courage to follow where Jesus leads. Keep us honest and just, freeing us from chains that keep us enslaved in so many ways. Save us, O oh God, from bigotry, intolerance, and abusive relationships, and equip, equip us to battle injustice wherever it is found. Help us to become channels of healing and peace for others as we ourselves are being healed. We pray for all those who dedicate themselves to ease the burdens of others, who work to battle poverty in our community and beyond. Show us ways to carry the goodwill of your people into homes where fear has been supreme and where love struggles to survive. May we be your church beyond these walls, wherever you call us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.
I say a particular uh, praise to God that Zonia is able to step in at the last <laughs> minute to fill in for choir and to share some special music. Thank you, Zonia, for being our musician this day in uh, absence of our choir. Well, let's wait until I play it. <laughs> no, I just, uh, <laughs> fine. My hands are not cooperating. So we need to pray for your hands. We need to pray for your hands. <laughs>
But I picked it, and I was going, oh my gosh, I just went, and I was kind of less spirit guided, and I thought this is, you could think of whatever. Yeah. Which I told um, her, what's her name over there? <laughs> Gail. step in at the last minute and oh by the way no choir we need you to play <laughs> as you know what i was doing all day i know i'm so sorry but thank you for doing that we and, I, and i'm totally oblivious to it all because i'm at annual gathering so the, the, this is proof in the pudding that you folks do amazing work without me so i'm very proud of all of you our scripture this day comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. It is my uh, great joy to introduce uh, Olivia and Emily, who will tell us a little bit more about their work. Um, some of you know that we have intentionally this year tried at least um, every two months, sometimes once a month, to invite organizations from the community that are doing work to alleviate the suffering and the pain uh, of those who are impoverished and uh, fighting intolerance uh, in our community. And so we are grateful for their work. Uh, Emily, you've been uh, there how long? 15 years. 15 years, yes, yes. So when I uh, hit the pavement in Reading, I immediately was introduced to Western Service Workers uh, uh, seven, eight years ago and have continued to be inspired by their work. So I'm going to invite you to come, as how, Olivia, yes, come and share, and the mic is on to speak right into it. High school comes back here again. Just be, just relax. Good morning. My name is Olivia Rodriguez, and I am a full-time volunteer with Western Service Workers Association. And this year with me, of course, is Emily, as she introduced herself. And I wanted to thank you, Pastor Chapman, for hosting us. We're here to speak to you all, to, all of you today about our current spring campaign. Pastor Chapman has been a supporter of ours for many years, and we want to thank her sincerely for the support she and the church have given us. You have hosted our sand distributions, Halloween parties, and back-to-school distributions many times, and it has made a big difference. For any who don't know, Western Service Workers Association is based in Shasta County and is an all-volunteer membership association of working families struggling to make ends meet. With the cost of living going up, many families are choosing between electricity and food. Through our 11-point benefit program, we help working families with immediate needs like food and clothing. We take members to volunteer doctors, dentists, and attorneys while helping families have a voice to change deeper problems affecting all of us. Right now, we're in the middle of our Spring into Action campaign to expand our benefits program. This month, we received 1,200 pounds of salmon from Lucid Fish Hatchery, which we are distributing to hundreds of our members this spring. We're also working on a campaign to stop utility shutoffs. PG&E rates increased 40% since 2021, so many families are struggling to keep up. In the summer, it can be deadly to go without power. So we're running weekly utility advocacy sessions and canvassing low-income neighborhoods to reach families impacted by this. We urgently need volunteers to help with all of this. 
Volunteers can learn to do medical and legal advocacy, split and store firewood for families who need it in the winter, run clothing distributions, go out to low-income neighborhoods to reach more people who need help, write and do desktop publishing for a newsletter, and many other things such as driving and picking up food. If you don't know how to do this, we can show you. I learned how to drive here. <laughs> <laughs> We are also running a salmon distribution right here next Saturday. Uh, we were hoping to run a salmon distribution this next Saturday. I did hear that some were anticipating this last Saturday. And if you are not able to make it this Saturday, you can give us a call. We can get it to you anytime. We need drivers and people who can help bag salmon and sign families in. And again, we greatly appreciate First Christian support of our work. We have a table in the back by the front door. Uh, kind of tucked in the corner. Apologies, my, I'm not very good at putting things on. <laughs> um, so it's where you can pick up our current newspaper, and you can also leave your name and number so we can get back to you and see how you can help. We are also collecting donations to sponsor our spring campaign and to cover the gas and other expenses to get working families the things they need. We are 100% volunteer run and are community supported seven days a week. So uh, we don't get support. We don't. <laughs> right now we're raising two thousand dollars to sponsor our benefit expansion so anything towards this helps thank you thank you uh, i would just like to just affirm what olivia was saying and just thanking the church for your support it's been tremendous to have space for our events our back to school distributions we normally do every year the kids get backpacks and school supplies and it's just tremendous to be able to have that kind of community support and a place that our members can count on as allies so thank you um, so i want to give an opportunity if there are questions and i'm going to start off with um, uh, some of you uh, are aware that uh, western service workers did a lot of work uh, in recovery for the car fire campfire uh, that there has been some log jams that have occurred in Sacramento uh, holding up money um, so could you share uh, where that stands currently um, where where is the fire recovery process thank you um, so as Pastor Chapman mentioned there uh, there is statewide hurdles to the fire recovery there was money about a billion dollars that was made available for 2018 fire victims. As of about eight months ago, only one family had gotten help from them. So it was major, major obstacles, which I won't get into all the details of, but basically the lack of prioritization by the state to make sure that the families get help um, that they need urgently. It's been more than five years now. Yes. Or about yes. Um, so we met with, and Pastor Chapman was there, um, with Megan and Brian Dolly's offices, the, the legislative reps for our region, and that was back in September. So we uh, had people from the car fire and other um, fires that were able to advocate for the disaster relief needs and to basically get the legislature to prioritize getting the money moving. So um, not only that, um, but to allocate more funds because the big issue was even with the money that was available, the state had said that they were going to have to deny about 500 families because the need was far greater than the funds. So there's a need for billions of dollars more, not only for fire prevention, but fire recovery. Um, and we've been dealing with the mill fire and all these things where people can't, the cost of rebuilding is so high that their insurance is not enough, even if they, if they are insured. So people, these communities are not recovering year after year after year. So we were able to, the good, the good news um, is that Megan and Brian Dolly's representatives um, pledged to take that issue to the state legislature and to get funding. So that now is, we are following up on that pledge because it's one thing to say it, it's another to do it and move it forward and we all know how that goes. So we do need help, you know, writing letters and encouraging the um, legislative offices to move this forward. So that's, that's what's in. Are they also trying to ungridlock the other monies, the other funding? Yes, well that, um, that's a federal delay, it turns out, because it's federal funds to California, so it has to go through additional environmental reviews on top of 
state regulations, and we're not opposed to environmental regulations, but the problem is the, the number of workers in that department makes it to where it's, it's delayed more than a year. So they are working on that, but the biggest issue that we heard from the, the state agency that was dealing with the funds was that they need more money from the state, regardless of what the federal government is gonna do, because that's much harder to get through those log jams. We need the state to step up and say, we're gonna fill those gaps. So that was really the direction that we took it. And in the meantime, people are getting help much quicker because we also met with the state representative for that program, the agency that runs that funds, in addition to the legislature. So we're kind of doing any and all we can to move it forward. So um, it has moved forward a lot quicker, but there's still hundreds of families that can't recover. And now the county is telling people in Keswick that if they don't have a permit to rebuild, then they're not able to live in their temporary trailers. So we're currently dealing with that because a lot of people are living in those trailers because they don't have the money to recover because of the state delays. So it's a very tough situation, so we're working. That's not, it's kind of complicated, but yeah, yeah we're making progress. And yeah. thanks to allies of Pastor Chapman. Are there other questions? Now, I can we ask to donate to you guys today? Yeah, we have the donation can. It's whatever okay. ways people can help, even the food donations at any time. Volunteering is number one need always. Mm -hmm. You know, we need full time volunteers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, for, for those that want to help anyway with donations, or maybe you don't have the time, but you'd like to donate, that goes right to the front lines with like the release of the gas for the salmon distribution to get it where it's going. So anything else? Yes. I just wanted to let you know that during the month of June, our congregation will be collecting non-perishable food for your organization. Oh, in thank you. Thank you very much. That is huge difference. We appreciate it. We do emergency food every day at our office and that's available for our family. So. so what would you suggest are the best foods to be able to donate? Uh, well we can take non-perishable and perishable. So if you do have like fruit that's coming off your tree we can take that. We do supplemental uh, food distributions every Saturday with produce from Sprouts Market and such so we can do that. And then non-perishables, um, peanut butter, jelly, spaghetti, things like that. I mean, the things that are the staple foods, um, canned beans, canned fruits, canned vegetables, those are all good. Canned meats. So, yeah. Anyhow. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Explain what happens when you go, you have a campaign to go door to door. Right. What happens that you're not like a Jehovah's Witness and knock on the door and we want to come in and convert you? What is a door-to-door -door campaign like? Right. Thank you for asking because that's that's one of the number one needs that we have is for volunteers that can do the outreach. But people, what is that? Because most people don't do that anymore. But it's it's just the grassroots way that we have of reaching the families that are most in need. So we go into low-income neighborhoods and we go in teams and we're basically not only assessing the needs because you get to find out at each door what are their issues, um, are their utilities shut off? Literally, we've had families that you get to that door, they don't have power. And had we not come, they would have no idea that we could actually help them. Mm -hmm. And because we have an advocacy benefit, we, you know, so we can help with immediate needs right at the door, but the first step is reaching them. So you go out, find out what their needs are, offer them membership. Membership is free and voluntary. So they've got only something to gain by being a part of an organization because that way they have the benefit program. And again, no one's turned away ever from our program. We have the resource, we distribute it. But it is self-help, it's members helping members, so each member can participate so that they get, like what they say, they get a voice. They can bring up the issues that then become the, the larger issues that we take on. So our members were the ones that have spoken at the city council about how they're impacted by poverty. So that all starts with the door-to-door -door canvassing, <laughs> reaching families, giving them that voice, giving them organization. And we need the volunteers that can take the request, that can go out and you know, um, then deliver the food. If someone needs it that day and they don't have a way to get into our office, we can we go back that afternoon and we deliver it. So the, that's every Saturday we go out from 10 to 2. Right now we're particularly going out in Anderson into the mobile home parks where A, their, you know, it, it, their poverty is just incredible because the rents are going up. And there's a whole issue with um, mobile home parks being bought from outside companies because they, um, they're, un, they're not regulated by the same rent control laws, so you can raise rent to anything you want in a mobile home park every 90 days. So we're seeing huge rent increases, so we're targeting it for that reason, but also because PG&E 
people are complaining about the increase in utility rates and the shutoffs, and in the summer we're trying to make sure to prevent as many shutoffs as possible. So right now we're canvassing a lot of Anderson and South Reading areas. So yeah. Other questions? Yes. How do you get the membership? The, well, through the through the canvassing and through referrals, where people will come in to sign up as members, and it's very simple. It's just so so we have a way of contacting them, you know, name and number. They have a sign up sheet at the back table there too. Yeah. So we can talk with them. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Um, I have had several people say to me, you know, I've heard about this WSWA. You know, they're having a Christmas party or they're having a Halloween party here or, or tamales. What you know, uh, uh, they didn't do it this year, but in the past they've made tamales here and. Um, Several of us have, have uh, benefited and, and tasted those delicious tamales. And um, uh, so who is Western Service Workers? Well, you know, they do best at telling their own story. And so uh, I invite you afterwards to feel free and ask more questions uh, personally with them and to learn more about the work that's being done uh, on, on behalf of Many times those without a voice, as you heard, um, some people will sit in the dark uh, in freezing cold weather, uh, having no heat, uh, because they don't know where to turn. They do not know where to turn. You know, we think, oh, but it's all over the place. Can you go to call 211, do this, do that. But if you are not in the loop, and that is not a part of your daily activities, um, some folks do not know how to advocate for themselves. So uh, that we are grateful that there are those out there who do. So, so feel free if you have questions to uh, please uh, uh, ask afterwards. Uh, and I have invited them to stay for lunch, but they have a very busy day. But certainly if you squeeze it in, we would love to feed you as well. <laughs> you feed so many others, we would love to feed you as well. Um, as we prepare to gather at a place, a feast, a table where we are fed spiritually, emotionally, and physically, uh, I invite you to stand if you are able, and we are going to sing, Come to the Table of the Lord. It's in the Purple Songbook. If you don't know it, otherwise you can just kind of sing along uh, uh, to the words up here. Stand if you're able.
classic overview of worship. What it means for the people of God to be in worship together. Devoted to teaching and fellowship, breaking of bread and prayers, experiencing awe at the wonders and the signs of God's love and grace, sharing a common purpose, placing others above self, distributing possessions and goods to those who are in need, praising God and having the goodwill of all people at the forefront of our minds. When our denomination was founded back in the 1800s, this text took on a particular significance for the early church founders as it became a design, an outline of what God intends for Christ's church to be and to do. Every Sunday, we are invited to ask ourselves, how are we doing at being the church that God has called us to be? May our offerings this day reflect our response and God's desire.
being hospitable to each other and generous to your world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I remember a story of one of my former seminary professors, uh, Jim Landis, who had developed a medical problem. He went to a doctor to see cardio a cardiologist to, for a heart cap. Uh, the procedure was routine, and Jim approached the whole thing with a sense of adventure, as he said, kind of like I'm approaching my shoulder replacement. Ask me if I still feel that way in about a week as the <laughs> surgery draws closer. But right now, it's kind of a whole new experience, and there's going to be things to learn. Anyway, the cardiologist discovered that Jim had 95% blockage in an artery and that if it were not corrected, it was 100% uh, that he would have sudden death. Being a practical sort, Jim said, well, then let's get it done. Do it right now. The procedure, however, became a bit longer than expected, uh, and he was awake during that. I don't know if that's normal to have him awake during those procedures, but the doctor was trying to get the um, uh, needle, the little balloon, inside of uh, the artery, and he was having a particularly difficult time, and he kept maneuvering the balloon around and around and trying to get it through, and Jim was getting kind of frustrated because it was taking so long, and finally, out of frustration, Jim said in that operating room, will someone, anyone, please come and touch me? Will someone just come and touch me? You see, the loneliness, the coldness, the mechanical process going on in him gave him no assurance, no comfort, no counsel. And having made his request, he felt a hand on his shoulder he didn't know who it was, but in that moment, he believed it was the hand of God. He felt different as that hand touched him. He learned that day how even a stranger's hand can manifest God's presence, can be God's touch for us. That tactile event, that being touched, was a moment of grace and reminds each one of us that such grace is present in the tactile touching of bread and cup at this table. We hold the bread in our hands. We press the cup to our lips. This feast is not imaginary or metaphysical. It is real, representing the realness of God being with us. A real human being named Jesus who lived, who loved, and suffered. And there on the cross as he hung, there was no one who could touch him. People loved him, at the, and they were gathered around at the bottom of the cross, but they could not touch him skin to skin. But we can. We can reach out to one another we can reach out to those who are Christ in our very midst, who are crying out, will somebody, will anyone please just touch me? Will someone hear my fear and my pain? Will someone show me the way to get out of this rut, to get out of this poverty, to have my electricity turned back on, to give me a place to live, to give me hope? Will someone, anyone, please touch me? When we eat this very touchable bread and drink this very real <laughs> cup, and receive that loving touch which Christ provides within these symbols. We are then in, we are inspired to extend that touch to those who are in need. As we gather at this table, we are called to remember the night that loving touch was first extended by Jesus to his friends when he took bread. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his friends saying, this is the body which is broken for you. Touch it. Eat it. And likewise, he took the cup and he blessed it and 
He gave it to them and he said, drink of it, all of you. Drink deeply for this is the cup of the new covenant, which promises forgiveness of sins, promises that God's touch is present here. Let us pray. O oh God, who touches us through bread and juice, giving us comfort in areas we feel most alone and afraid, give us the courage and resolve in turn to reach out and touch others with your love and consolation. We thank you for laying this foundation upon which your church has been built, and may we always be inspired by you through participating at this table. In Jesus' name, amen. This is God's table. This is not First Christian Church's table. Therefore, it is God who invites you this day to eat and drink as the trays are passed to you. <laughs>
friends go to be the church, living with glad and generous hearts, and may we live out who we say that we are. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen. Amen.